welcome to the Bold Talk by Joe podcast, coming straight to you from the Valley of the Sun, Phoenix, Arizona, your society and culture podcast. And now, let's welcome your host, Joe. Hello, peeps. Welcome back to the show. Welcome to Bold Talk by Joe podcast. Hopefully, everybody is doing great. So... You know this this uh, this week has been tough. I had a good Father's Day, and happy late Father's Day to everyone. I know that uh, if you're listening to this episode, it's uh, it's a Thursday, and on my Monday episode episode, I forgot to mention uh, to tell everybody happy all the fathers happy Father's Day. I forgot. I was just really really busy, but um, so it's been a tough one at work, right? And uh, not 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 tough like I am. I'm struggling with stuff. More of uh, we had a we had a coworker pass away, and um, it's a person that was there for 28 years or so in that company. Uh, met him about four times. Uh, seemed like a, a really good man, and um, you know I was supposed to work with him. It just I never really got the chance to because he he was really sick. I'm not going to mention who it is or the name of any of that uh, to keep uh, that's you know to to be respectful, right? But what I do want to talk about is uh, that we don't realize that we are on borrowed time, right? You don't realize, we don't realize that uh, one day we're good and the next day we could get sick and it could be over, right? Fast. And I believe that sometimes we take life for granted and uh, sometimes we don't value uh, our families or our kids or our friendships, and we kind of just go, you know, day to day, right? We're just like, whatever. We're just on this getting up in the morning, making some coffee, going to work, coming back home, dealing with bills, dealing with this, coming back, you know, uh, going back to work on Monday, having two days off, but sometimes you don't even get to rest, and it's like a cycle, right? You're constantly going to work, and sometimes you're going somewhere, traveling somewhere, but we forget on how valuable life is, right? Uh, we forget how valuable our time is, and time is very important because time is everything. Because without any time, you have nothing left, right? Um, and it's one of those things in life that uh, you always have to remember that you are on borrowed time, and always cherish everything that you have, and and be humble, and always try to help people out. And, uh, you know, try to, if there's any fights at home or any issues or anything like that, always try to to fix them, right? And, and try to go to bed. Uh, try not to go to bed upset at each other if, or your partner or your friends or whatever. Always try to fix the solution. Try to, try to find a solution and fix it, right? Because you don't know if you're going to wake up the next day. And, uh, you know, after my coworker that passed away, rest in peace, uh, he... Um, it was it was kind of like that, right? You're okay, and then all of a sudden, boom! It kind of hits you, and you're not okay, and and it's and it, life is over, right? And uh, then your family is 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 there mourning you, and uh, it's tough, right? It's tough because you you want to live your life to the fullest. At the same time, you don't want to go and do stupidity, right? I don't mean by living your life to the fullest. There's this saying that live your life like it's your last day on earth. And people really take that to a different perspective. They uh, they want to do stupidity and do stupid shit and uh, go around doing crazy stuff. And that's not what that means. It, it, uh, the, what it means is, is live your life like it's your last day, meaning uh, love your family, right? Tell your loved ones that you love them or... Uh, your kids, or try to do something nice, right? Try to do something nice for somebody, help somebody, uh, try to to leave a good uh, legacy behind, right? Somewhere, so, a legacy that they're not going to remind, remember you for being a, an asshole, but to remember you for the good things that that you did and and for the love that you gave out to others. So, you know, this it's tough, right? It's tough because. Um, you know, especially if you see when you when you hear about people dying, and you know, famous people or people like on the news or whatever, it's like, oh man, poor guy died or whatever. But when somebody from work dies, when they pass away, it's uh, it's tough, right? 
because it knocks you back in your seat and it makes you realize that you don't have all the time in the world, that you need to make sure that you are doing the best that you can every day so it's not a complete waste of time. There's a lot of people that go their whole lives just wasting their time, right? Just wasting everything. And then when it's all over and they're like, oh, shit, you know, I couldn't do anything. I'm sick now. I'm dying. I'm doing this. And you have nothing left. You didn't enjoy anything of life, right? And uh, I believe that the only thing that that I believe that, that that completes you in the end is the time spent with your with your family, right? With the people that you love, because it's not gonna be you're not gonna be dying and saying I I need to take my Ferrari. You're gonna be like, man, I don't want to die alone. I want to die with my you know next to my family. I want to be with them when the, the day that I that I pass away. But that's not a guarantee either, right? That that's not a guarantee. You could. Something could happen to you on the way home. Something could happen to you as you go to the store. I mean, with all the violence now and all these people driving like animals out here. And I mean, you just you just never know. And you can be as cautious as you want, be as healthy as you want, drive as vigilant as, as you want. But uh, when it's time and your time runs out, it's uh, it's over, right? And uh, all you have left is whatever, whatever, uh, whatever you did to to help or to or what or how you made people feel when you were around. So I always do my best to to not let anything bring me down. Always I'm always happy, right? If you if you meet me in person, I'm always cheerful and happy and uh trying to make the best out of it, trying to get a smile out of you, trying to make you laugh and uh I'm not obviously not rowdy or crazy or you know, sometimes people think that because you are an outgoing person and you're happy and you like to talk to people and you like to make jokes at work or this and that. They think that you're you're wild and if you drink, you're going to get wild and you're out of control. And, you know, people like that are judgmental, right? Um, I'm sure like some people at work think that way of me or something because I'm, I'm friendly, right? But uh, not at all. You know, I'm not uh, out of control. I'm usually just really chill. I'm a super chill person. Um, I can sit there, smoke cigars and just chill, watch TV, watch the fire, hang out with their friends, have a conversation, have a conversation with my dad, my mom, whatever, and just chill. I'm a real chill person, especially when I'm drinking. I don't get wild or get when I get into fights or any of that. I'm chill, enjoying the moment, spending time with my family. Um, that's the type of person I am. It's just because I'm happy and I like to crack jokes or make people laugh. It doesn't mean that I'm going to get out of control when I'm drinking or I'm somewhere or something like that. You know, I'm I'm respectful. I like to respect other people. And uh, I'm usually not going to uh, sit and argue with you if I'm with my family. I'll just walk away. It's always better to just walk away. And that's because I don't want... I don't want to have a shitty day where I'm completely depressed and, you know, all of a sudden I'm gone the next day. And it's like my family, all they can remember is, damn, he was, you know, he was depressed and pissed off about everything and and, and his time ran out. So it's tough, right? It's tough when when something like that happens near you and uh, especially at a work, at the workplace where you're at. And, uh, you know, like I said, it, it would have been a lot tougher if it would have been one of my coworkers that I that I worked uh, with on the floor uh, but uh, this person I met him maybe four times like I said he's he was in the comp- working for the company for 28 years or so uh, but I never really got the pleasure to to shake his hand and meet him and sit down and talk to him at all right it was just a, a person that I would hardly see like I said I maybe saw him four times in in four years and once once a year uh, so, but I had no idea that this uh, that this person was uh, was really was was sick at all, right? When the times that I've seen him, uh, he was he's smiling and saying, you know, hey, how's it going, and waving. So, I mean, that's what I mean. It's like you just never know what people are going through in their lives, right? You don't know if uh, they have some issue in their life that that is uh, that that they're going through and they're having a really bad time. And yes, they might smile and try to keep their hopes up, but they're going through something that's tough. And if you treat them like shit, you know, you just kind of ruin their time, ruin their, ruin their, ruin their day by doing that. Right. Now you just don't ever know. I, I, I'm going to share this story. Uh, it's, it's, it's a sad story and I'm also going to not say any names because, uh, it's just out of respect, but, uh, I had a friend, uh, I built a friendship with this uh, one person, with this guy, and uh, we became really good friends. We worked together 
and uh, we we were we were awesome together, right? We were in sales together, and uh, we both got along. We laughed. We went everywhere. We ate all kinds of delicious foods while we were at work, and uh, we were both on the same page. I helped him move out. I went to his uh, kids' birthday parties and all kinds of stuff. Like we were we were good friends, right? And I switched jobs and I went somewhere else and we will still talk over the phone and this and that and uh, hang out once in a while. But uh, there was this one time where uh, he kept reaching out a lot more than usual, right? And I was like, I don't know what's going on. At the time, I was super broke. I had no money for nothing. I was trying to figure out how was I going to survive and uh, how was it? How, how was I going to make it at work? Or what was I going to eat at work tomorrow for lunch? And hopefully, I was hoping to myself that somebody was going to buy, or, or, or you know, the manager was going to buy something for for the shop or something. That way, I can eat because I was so hungry, right? I was I was starving, and I didn't get to eat until I I went home and I will text my mom and hey, how are you guys doing? And Hey, you hungry? You want to come over and eat? And that I was like, yeah, I'll, I'll stop by, right? I wouldn't be like, I'm starving. I'll be like, yeah, of course, I'll go over there and eat. And uh, so when he was trying to contact me, and and more than usual, I was super broke, right? So there was uh, this one time that he he contacted me and uh, he called me and hey, how's it going, man? Let's go have some beers. And I was just getting home uh, after a long day. It was a Wednesday. It was like a weird day of the week. And uh, I was like, I don't know, man. Let me. I, I'm just getting home. Let me text you. So we were texting. It's like, hey, I'll meet you in. I'll meet you in Scottsdale, Arizona. Let's get some beers, man, and uh, hang out. I, I really want to talk to you. And I was like, sweet. And I just I looked at my bank account, and I was like, there's no way I can make it over there. And I was not going to ask him for money, right? I was not gonna be like, hey, man, you got a couple bucks? Like, come on. You know what I mean? It's just not me. And especially like, hey, you got a couple bucks so I can go drink drink with you. And by the way, I can't even buy you a beer because I don't have any money. So I wasn't going to do any of that. So I had a motorcycle and I was like, okay, let me, you know, I'm going to go check the gas on the motorcycle and I'll just drive the motorcycle. But uh, Scottsdale, Arizona was about an hour and 45 minutes away from where I lived. So I was like, shit, if I go all the way over there and I drink, I'm on a bike. And that's really scary because I am not going to make it. I don't have enough money for an Uber. I don't have money for a taxi. So I told him that I couldn't, right? And I'm like, I, I, I just can't go, man. I just, uh, I can't go right now. I'm, 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 I got to do some stuff. And uh, I was embarrassed to tell him that I had no money, right? So then he texted me back and he said, uh, like, don't worry about anything. It's like, I, I got you over here. Um, even with those, even with that, I still, you know, I, I don't even know if I was going to make it there, if I was going to have enough gas to make it there. So I know I had enough gas to make it to work, but I didn't have enough gas to make it there. And I wasn't going to go borrow money from my parents to go over there and drink. So I uh, I said I couldn't make it. And he's like, oh, come on, man. You know, I'm, I'm right here and this and that. And I really need to talk to you. And um, I, I couldn't make it. You know, I, I couldn't make it. And, uh, you know, a week later went by and um, I, I was texting him like, Hey man, sorry, I couldn't make it. How's it going? How you doing? This and that. And, uh, no response. Right. Uh, a couple of weeks later, um, I'm like, what the heck, man? So I, I start texting him like, Hey man, like you all right, bro. Like you're not responding. Like what's, what's going on, dude. And I just got him paid. Right. I, 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 I got back on my feet. So I had a little bit of money. I sold some stuff and I was like, I'm going to see if I can, talk to him, see if I can invite him over for a beer, take him somewhere, right? Have a few beers and uh, no response. So uh, later on that day, I get a message through Facebook and it's his wife. And uh, basically uh, she said that he, he committed suicide. So um, that was it. That was, uh, I don't know what kind of conversation we were going to have. And, and that's why I, I share this story is because you don't know what people are going through. And if they offer, they offer help, they, they're, 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 they're asking for help. Uh, maybe, maybe that was his way of asking for help was telling me, Hey, come over and have a beer. Uh, it's just, I didn't even think I was even going to make it to be honest. I don't think I was even going to make it to that place. Uh, I would I'd probably break down before I even got there actually. So, uh, but yeah, he uh, he he passed away, and uh, never got to talk to him. I, like I said, I have no idea what we were gonna talk about. It will always be a mystery. 
It will always be something that I'm going to beat myself up for for a little bit every time I remember it because I wish that I would have had, uh, I would have been better standing money wise where I could have just been like, yeah, man, I'll just take a taxi over there, no big deal, or I'll go over there and take an Uber back home or whatever. Um, but I, I had no, I had no money whatsoever. And uh, like I said, nobody's expecting stuff like this, right? I was just like, he just wants to have a beer, right? He likes to drink. And uh, I didn't, I didn't feel like it was something weird or nothing. I just like, man, he's just kind of texting me a little bit more than usual. But uh, I had no idea that he was going to uh, to do that. I did not ask uh, his wife. Actually, uh, went down and to the for his services and all that, and uh, to give my condolences and to her and, and his kids. Uh, but I didn't ask what happened or or what he did or what was on all I know. All I found out at the end was that uh, he wasn't living at home anymore. And, you know, I was like, oh, okay. But other than that, I did not pry. It's something that, you know, I'm not going to get, I'm not going to dig into somebody's personal life. But uh, the the whole point of the story is, is that you just never know. You just never know what people are going through. You don't know when they're crying for help. Some people cry for help differently than others. And uh, it shows you that uh, you you are on borrowed time, right? His time was up, and uh, unfortunately, either the time runs out or you run yourself out of your own time. So hopefully, you know, this story kind of gets you thinking a little bit. Um, like I said, I, uh, whenever I think about this, I beat myself up a little bit because I wish that I could have been there for him. Uh, maybe he wanted to talk to me about something that uh, he was planning on doing and maybe I could have talked him out of it. Right. But, uh, I will never know that now. And, uh, that's why whenever somebody, uh, is asking for help or needs help with something, I, um, I try to do the best to, you know, hear you out and, be like, yeah, what's going on, man? Uh, you know, sometimes over text, it's really hard to figure out if somebody's going through things, right? Because it's you're not talking to them, you're you're texting them, so that's it can it, it could be completely weird, right? And like, oh, I didn't know you actually were serious. You know what I mean? Like, we're we're just texting because you don't have no emotion through text unless you're putting exclamation marks and all this. I mean, there's really no emotion. It's not the same as talking to somebody else over the phone or in person. So, you know, don't don't let your time run out. Uh, and and not do anything with your life, right? Make sure that you are always working hard, uh, loving everybody, treating everybody with respect, no matter what you've done in the past, no matter how have you been in the past, if you were an asshole before or whatever you were before, uh, always do the best that you can to treat everybody with respect and, uh, and, and, and to try to be the best human being that you can, right? Nobody is perfect. Some, we have good and bad days, but... Try the best that you can, especially other people that might be hurting, right? And and you might not know. Uh, always try to treat them good. Try to treat them with respect, right? Because you just don't know uh, what they're going through. So think about these words that, uh, think about these stories that I just told you. And uh, I'm sure this episode is going to be, um, this episode is, is not uh, a highlight this is a, uh, it's a, it's a sad episode, right? It's, it's uh, something that uh, none of us want to hear and go through, especially when it's people that are, that have, that have been close to you. And uh, it's, it's a sad thing, right? So live your life to the fullest, responsibly, love your family, work hard, be kind. Until next time, peace. Thanks for checking out Bold Talk by Joe Podcast. We want to thank all our listeners and supporters around the world. You can listen to the show on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and YouTube Podcasts. And don't forget to subscribe. You can follow us on Twitter at Bold Talk by Joe and on Instagram at Bold Talk by Joe.